Uh, my husband and I met uh, online via a gay website. The date we first, our first date was November 28th, 2004. We met and we had dinner and I cooked him dinner. Um, I'm half Italian, he's half Italian. Um, so we connected on that Italian food uh, basis because I had cooked him Italian food for our first date and then for our second date he cooked me a different kind of Italian food. Um, and that was, I think our second date was our th the third day or the fourth day uh, after we had met. Um, and then we moved in, uh, in well, I think officially it was April 1st, 2005 although we were kind of staying at each other's apartments most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and whatever doubts I might have had, which I didn't really have any doubts, uh, in the first couple of weeks, um, were completely erased when he took care of my dog that Christmas when I was away for uh, 10 days. Um, we've been married a little less than a year and a half. Um, I probably get along with my in-laws better better than any of their other um, uh, their kids' spouses. Um, and I think a part of that is, um, you know, not just simply that they like me and I like them, mm -hmm. but also the importance that my family and I place on family, which is very similar to the way his family uh, functions and is structured. Um, the reason why I think we work well together is that he is very patient and very calm mm -hmm. and I am very impatient and very passionate and uh, demonstrative and those things complement each other. Um, as well as, you know, having, like most marriages, just sort of having similar uh, goals and, um, and ideas about where you want your life headed um, combined with complementary personalities I think is what yeah. makes people suited for each other. For us to not be counted in any sort of census or survey is frustrating and um, annoying, but also typical and par for the course. So it's simultaneously frustrating. And um, I think people just need to realize that um, diversity is a good thing and that um, and they need to stop listening to talking points that have nothing to do with the basic facts of what it means to be gay. You still hear lots of things about gay people being sick and having and a lot of things that are reflected in a moralistic way, despite the fact that oh, almost 40 years ago, the psychiatric and psychological communities realized that being gay is not a condition or an illness um, and took it off of any, any sort of legitimate list of illnesses and stopped trying to treat it and uh, cure people of it. And no matter what studies and surveys come out, there still seems to be a strong resistance to um, those basic facts. And if people would just accept those basic facts, then a lot of the discrimination would fall away, I think. Well, I would just hope that same-sex couples are included in the next census, census like any couples. Um, it's important to be counted so that you under, so that, like I said before, so that you understand that um, what the diversity of a community is and you can um, adjust, you know, sir, I mean, that's basically what the census is, mm -hmm. is to figure out what the population is and adjust services and, and um, you know, and other things that the government does uh, to fit the population. And so, mm -hmm. Just as it's important to know whether, you know, the population is young or old or Latino or African American or white or Asian, it's important to know how many gay couples there are and how many lesbian couples there are and separate from that so that there are, um, so that we're represented fairly and so that um, goods and services and things that the government and society provides are um, adjusted and fulfilled accordingly.